So there's this amazing reporting that John Solomon has done about basically executive privilege or executive privilege being waived retroactively by the White House and how that's connected with the Mar-a-Lago raid. I mean, amazing stuff. I'm going to want to get your take on that. Of course, everybody knows now that Dr. Fauci has announced his retirement and some people are concerned whether there'll be appropriate oversight or not. I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. Um, and finally, some, develop some developments in the Danchenko case. And I think that should be an episode for us. Okay, where do we start? So I think we have to start with Dr. Fauci. You know, Dr. Fauci has announced his retirement, as you, you and I both know. And, uh, you know, some people have expressed concern that by doing this, he may be trying to escape some sort of congressional oversight or accountability for his actions of the last few years. So I think that that is what he's trying to do, because he knows this administration will give him a grand send off, probably give him the Congressional Medal of Freedom from the president in the United States Congress, the highest civilian award you can get for government service. And I think for us to give it to him would be a crime, basically. Why? because what we are talking about is a course correction that was supposed to be the biggest pandemic of the last half century. And what we're finding out while we uncover Fauci's lies is it was just the opposite, in large part because of the false information that Fauci was responsible to put out facts was putting out politics to appease leadership and the media. And so I think it is critical Congress take the reins of this investigation because we know that there's nobody in government that's going to do it. There's no DOJ or FBI that we can trust to run this sort of investigation, even though I believe Fauci should be prosecuted for lying under oath to Congress on numerous instances. But Congress, and as we'll talk about, has the ability, even when Fauci leaves government service, to effectuate constitutional oversight. I don't think I've made it a secret, my feelings toward Dr. Fauci, and they're based on his conduct as a government official. I don't personally know the man. But everything that man has said has literally gone from one end of the spectrum to the other, depending on what day it was. Fauci has been one of the most destructive people in government. So the head of the CDC, uh, Rochelle Walensky, has now made it public that the CDC is going a total revamp, a complete facelift. Based on what? The utter failures of Fauci and his instructions and guidance during the entire COVID epidemic. That should show the world and America that we were led astray by politicization of our NIH response and our COVID countermeasures for political reasons. The problem I have with that is the same people that were running the CDC and got all this information wrong and spread all the lies um, on behalf of Fauci are the same ones now placing themselves in charge to redo it. It's like asking a criminal charged of murder to be his own judge. It doesn't make any sense and it's not gonna lead to any accountability. The only thing they're gonna do, watch it, is grow the size of the CDC, hire more people, typical government overcorrection and say, we've created new departments within the CDC and they're gonna look at how we got it wrong and issue a report and spend taxpayer dollars and we're gonna hire, 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 hire our way to a solution. And that's the biggest problem I have in government. And it doesn't just happen at the CDC. It happens at the FBI, at DOJ, at DOD, at CIA, and everywhere else. This government overcorrection, as they call it. But this isn't the fix. First, figure out why you got it wrong. You got it wrong because you politicized it and lied to the American people. And you got caught. Now they want the mainstream media to carry their water again and say, okay, we're fixing it. And it wasn't just us that got it wrong. It was, you know, they'll probably go back and say Trump got everything wrong, like they normally do, and sort of gloss over the details. Congress is the only one right now, not right now, when the majority flips, that can look into this. There's a lot of conjecture about this, that the moment that uh, Dr. Fauci is out, there's much more limited opportunities for providing this sort of oversight well, or accountability. I think, so there's, uh, there's some truth to that. So when you're in government, um, the inspector generals, as we call them, the IGs, each uh, institution or agency in government has their own inspector general, the DOJ IG, the DOD IG. We've talked about both on our shows in, in previous um, episodes. Uh, and so does the CDC and, and all these other institutions, NIH and, and everything. And the reason they have these is because when government screws up, there's supposed to be an internal investigation on its employees. Now, while you're still an employee in the United States government, the IG has jurisdiction over you, has the ability to call you in and question you under oath and question 
your research, your methods, and look at the documents you produced and say, how did you get to this position? How did you get to this decision? Was it wrong? Was it based on faulty intelligence? Did you lie? The DO D DOJ IG has showed us guys like Andy McCabe at the FBI lying while he was deputy director. Um, the DOD IG has showed us under Biden that the Trump administration's response to January 6th, for example, was correct, accurate, and swift. And so these are important memorandums that they put out after a month's and sometimes years long investigation to inform the public. So I'm sure this IG, whoever it is, is gonna come in and do that. The problem is once you leave government, you're not beholden to the IG anymore. Hmm. So, and that's what people get wrong. They're like, oh, the DOD, the, you know, the IG can issue subpoenas. They can't, they don't have subpoena power. Um, they're not the Department of Justice. They can't haul you in in front of a grand jury and make you sit down and talk. And so when Fauci's out of government, he's no longer under the auspices of the IG. He could voluntarily submit to it, but I'm pretty sure he's not gonna do that. So it, it's left to Congress. And so you've talked before uh, in, in the last episode, actually, about using, you know, withholding of funds as this kind of tool to actually get agencies to respond. So is this the kind of thing you're imagining here again? Yeah, I guess the timing is good because it's fresh in my head because I literally just finished this chapter in my book that I'm about that I'm going to release next year on how we have actual internal accountability from Congress. When I was head of the Russiagate investigation for then Chairman Nunes, we ran into roadblock after roadblock because we were a Republican majority in Congress trying to get documents and witnesses from a Republican administration. And we thought, well, this should be pretty easy. It's the same political team, for lack of a better word. And we, you know, we, the, the truth couldn't have been further from that. What happened was we got the Heisman from Rod Rosenstein, from Chris Ray, from the IC, from everybody. Then we issued subpoenas. And congressional subpoenas, we, I don't know if we've gone over this, are a little different than, say, a DOJ subpoena. DOJ subpoenas carry a lot of heft. You know, if you violate that, they can haul you into court and prosecute you criminally and put you in jail. A congressional subpoena is much different. It has a lot of weight in the media, and it doesn't have the teeth that an executive branch subpoena does. And so, you, you know, we've, we've seen these congressional subpoenas take years to literally adjudicate in court. Remember, Holder was held in contempt of Congress for violating a congressional subpoena. The case took four years. The United States doesn't have four years to do this, uh, this kind of oversight. So what do you do? You do issue the subpoenas. You do ask for all the documentation. You do line it up so you can go out to the American public and say, we ask for all of this material from Fauci. All of the research, all the underlying emails, all of the communications on personal phones, on government phones, uh, the classified information, the unclassified information, you make sure you document an extensive list, a glossary, if you will, of everything you're asking for and show the American people you've asked for that. And who asked for that? The appropriate committee of jurisdiction in Congress. And whoever that, you know, for the FBI and DOJ, it's judiciary. For the intelligence community, it's the intel committees. For the DOD, it's the armed services committee. And similarly, for the CDC and NIH, there's the uh, a committee over health and sciences. And so they'll have jurisdiction over that. And a couple of other committees will as well. So they can issue those subpoenas and they can issue subpoenas for witnesses as well, i.e. to Fauci. But here's what's gonna happen. You have, if the midterms go the way everybody predicts and you have a Republican majority in the House and Senate and they can run two separate investigations, let's just stick with the House for now. They are going to run into a Democratic led executive branch where all these actions were taken by the Democratic-led CDC, the Democratic NIH, the Democratic DOJ, and FBI, and et cetera.